One of the most common problems when tracking anything is the object going out of frame. So for example, looking at this tiger. So I'm going to create some points here. And as I track right, these are going to go off screen. Well, really they're actually not going off screen. What's happening is when the tracker is identifying the motion is going out of bounds of the shot, then these points are going to disappear. And of course this would create a problem if we tried to lock this down because this point, we'll just take a look at it, is not actually moving and all the points would bunch up and overlap each other. So what we need is a solution to push these points off screen in a clean way. Well, that's where interpolation comes in. Interpolation is a system where it takes all the points on a layer, and uh, at the moment we only support one layer. Sorry about that, we will have a layering system coming very soon as you can see up here. And it takes the points and it makes them follow the living points when they die and run out of keyframes. So here are the living keyframes for this selected point. You can see that they're gray, and we move along and you see that this point is moving. And then finally here is the last living point. And then after that, the point is dead and not moving, which is indicated by these black keyframes down here. So for the following frames, this point is going to need to look at the other points in the shot and follow them out of the frame. You would just click one of the interpolation methods. So instead of don't interpolate, we could try position scale rotate. And now as we play this, you'll notice that all the points follow the living points out of the shot. They might do some sort of crazy things in here. However, it's really not going to be a problem. When you think about what a point needs to do when it's off screen, this point here is going to be interpolating. And it only matters where it is when the geometry that it's connected to is visible. So for example, here's a face consisting of the four verts and the four edges, which is now off screen. So all that interpolation has to do is move these points off screen until the connected face is off screen. And then after that, because this face isn't rendering, it really doesn't matter if this tiger is folding in half and doing a whole bunch of non-believable stuff. The attention to focus is all going to be right here as the points are going out. So interpolated points typically just choose points that are nearby. So I'm going to shut off the mesh for a moment and turn on render guide point links. And you can see that this point, as soon as it dies, which is indicated by the dark blue, meaning that it's interpolated because it no longer has these gray keyframes of its own, is connected to two nearby keyframes. And it's following these two points using position, scale, and rotate. And then as that point dies or is for whatever reason unsuitable, it chooses another. And then as those die, it'll choose others and it will continue to choose new points to follow off screen up until there are no more points left to choose. And you can see here that it completely dies and no longer interpolates when there are no more points living in the shot. So let's talk about another problem that's solved with interpolation when you need to track points that are outside the borders of your object. So turning my mesh back on, for example, if we need to track all of this tiger up here and out of the frame, well, actually, I'd probably just go ahead and create some more tracking points here on the border to get it a little bit closer for more accuracy. But if we want to go right to the edge of the tiger's fur, we would want to create points outside of the tiger. Well, if I go to create a point through normal means, and I have interpolation set to on, this point is automatically going to interpolate for the rest of the shot. And we would call this an extension point. An extension point, a dead point, an interpolated point, they're all really the same thing, but sometimes for clarification purposes, I call them different terms based on how they're used. Now, the big issue with creating a point like this is that when I go to press track, it's going to start tracking, and that is obviously very problematic. So what we really want is when we create a point, we want it to be locked. So that way, when I press track, it can't track, and it's only going to follow. Well, it just so happens that we have a hotkey to create a point and lock it, which we call the extension key hotkey. You hold down Control, Shift, Alt, and click on Windows, and it's Command, Alt, Shift, Click on Mac. So I can just go ahead and surround this tiger, maybe on the bottom too, clear the mesh, triangulate the mesh, and those extension points are going to follow. So just showing this with some real context for how this looks, let's just attach a texture. So going to my first frame here, 
I'll press lockdown. You can see that the mesh is expanded outside of this tiger and we can put graphics here. So for example, maybe I'll remove this checkerboard and without getting too heavy into Roto, I'll just align this somewhere around this tiger. So you can see it like that. That's another thing is Roto is also very, very easy inside of the stabilized comp because things by definition are stabilized and not moving. So moving back into the main comp, because we've created those extension points, we can go right up to the edge of the object. And of course, uh, maybe it wasn't quite far enough here as you can see on that frame. So um, we could correct that and just roto that out, you know, fix that, make sure that goes right to the very edge. And then when we go back, you'll see that's updated and going all the way to the edge. That's more of a craftsmanship thing than knowing how to use the software.